Intermagnetics General makes the strongest magnets in the world, then hits a barrier. We would have the magnet, we would attempt to energize it, and unexpectedly and suddenly, the field inside the magnet, the magnetic field, would collapse. We alone were able to correctly analyze the origin of this instability. We deduced correctly that we had to change the properties of the superconducting tape that we used to wind the magnets in an inobvious way, an inobvious way. Carl, Swartz, and Hart worked for months on the problem under the guidance of Charlie Bean. They finally find a solution ahead of the rest of the world. For most of the decade of the 70s, intermagnetics worked on ever larger research, development, and demonstration projects, largely in the energy field. IGC gets the contract for the state-of-the-art Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory. IGC makes more than 14,000 miles of superconducting wire for the construction of the world's largest atom smasher. By the end of the 70s, General Electric follows the rest of the market. It loses faith in superconductors and dumps its 45% share of IGC. Little did they know that soon everything would change. We uh, came across a need for large-scale superconducting magnets. And the first magnet somebody ordered from us, he didn't tell us what they wanted to do with it, but they wanted to put people in it. But then we got an order from Philips Medical, and that's what really started in a magnetic growth began. Once MRI came into play, then uh, the challenge was to manufacture a different material which was appropriate for these new magnets. And so we left our niobium-310 tape and we went to a niobium-titanium uh, filamentary material which is still used today. Intermagnetics is producing the best quality superconducting materials on the market. They're suppliers to major magnet producers. But the primary client is Technicare, a division of Johnson & Johnson. All seemed to be going well with Technicare until October of 1982. The National News releases information that some users of Tylenol had dropped dead in early October. Eventually, it was found that a worker had contaminated some of the supply with cyanide. But for Tylenol, the damage is already done. Technicare depends on Tylenol for profit. Now with low sales and stocks, the company is weak. GE then takes over Technicare. Since GE had its own magnet producing facility in South Carolina by this time, IGC instantly loses its best customer. More problems strike when IGC loses Philips Medical as a potential client. It's uncertain that there would be room in the market for both Intermagnetics and its competitor, Oxford Instruments. There is danger that IGC may fold, just as most other startups had the decade earlier. 